Well, it's hard to believe, but it's been nearly 10 years to the day since Irene hit our area, and we remember it well. I'm telling you that street light is going to come down any moment because I'm hearing the sound of loose metal. And you know what? I was in my room watching a lot of reporters and I said, you know what? I'm not going to be stupid and stand out there. So I've got some shelter and I'm safe. Uh, this is the smartest place to be under this overhang of the Golden Nugget Casino Hotel, former Trump Marina, here in the marina section of Atlantic City because it is really a great barrier against the elements because you step outside five feet from one of these pillars. And, Mike, if I had a big enough belt, I'd tie myself to one of these pillars. Like, remember Dan Rather tied himself to that telephone pole down in Miami. Well, that storm battered the region during the early morning hours of August 28th. 2011. Our Steve Keeley was there. Of course, Irene, one of the most costly storms in American history, and it took some years to recover for a lot of people. Uh, you know, we told, we showed you Steve Keeley. Chris O'Connell was covering it that uh, time as well. And Chris, you were in the thick of it back then. You are now in Brigantine, and, and of course, a, a different kind of night here 10 years later. Yeah, Jason, when you talk storms to people down the shore, the first thing most people think about is Superstorm Sandy. But you got to remember, 14 months before Irene came ashore, 10 years ago this week, about three miles north of where I stand now here in Brigantine, making its own kind of history. Watching a sunset and listening to music on the beach in Brigantine is certainly not what Dan Moss was doing 10 years ago tonight. He was preparing for Irene to hit in a matter of days. Irene was five days of rain, localized flooding, people out of their homes. Like many New Jersey residents, he remembers Tropical Storm Irene, the deluge of rain, the downed trees, and the ominous warning from then-Governor Chris Christie. Get the hell off the beach. It did cause a lot of rain, a lot of flooding, and it was a, uh, I think, a $6 billion storm. Meteorologist Jim Eberwine was in charge of tracking storms in New Jersey for the National Weather Service back then. He says a month before Irene, state and county officials simulated a major hurricane for training. It turns out those lessons learned forced New Jersey's first mandatory evacuation and may have ended up saving lives. The fact that we held that exercise and we knew what could possibly happen if we didn't take any action. It would have been a, a real mess. Irene was also notable since it was the first major natural disaster followed in real time on social media. It has also helped emergency managers plan for the future. I think we're in very good shape. Uh, you can't prevent storms naturally. Uh, but you can get people out of harm's way. For residents, it's not about if the next storm is coming. But when? You kind of know the storm's coming, and you really got to be prepared. If you have to evacuate with your car and your family to higher waters, yeah, get out. And remember, it is the middle of August to late September is when hurricane season typically hits its peak, with Jason September 10th being the most likely day of a named hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. Crystal.